Welcome back, everyone. This is Classic Home Sitting Practices, and today I'm going to be talking about growing tomatoes. Now, usually a growing uh, <laughs> episode would probably be left for the beginning of the season. However, I am in a new place with a new climate, and I personally want to be able to share my experiences after I knew what I was doing instead of telling everybody about just one experience that I've had from one climate. Now, I have two experiences. So for people in the U.S. or on the Western Hemisphere, I know you guys are heading into winter, but for those who have extended seasons uh, that are going to be able to have a second round of tomatoes, or even people who are living in Australia, for instances, who are going to be able to do this, Uh, This information is for you. So, growing tomatoes is one of the funnest, most popular, and possibly the easiest of the fruiting bodies in gardening. And it is probably one of the most popular because of this reason and for the fact that tomatoes are delicious. A lot of people really enjoy them. Now, you do have, every once in a while, the oddball person who doesn't like them. Stop being friends with them. They're not worth your time. Anyway, for those of you who have decided that you wish to learn the secret of growing tomatoes, let me give you my experiences. Now... Being in a cold and a hot climate, the one thing that I definitely have always done is start my tomatoes inside. Now, the reason being is because even in a hotter climate that I am in, I still like to start them early. So when they get into the ground, they are well established and they'll be able to give me tomatoes sooner. So I like to start my tomatoes about four to six weeks early. Six weeks is the most preferable because they're about eight inches tall at that time. And I'm able to put them in the ground, uh, again, make them hardy. And what you're going to need for this is again all the supplies that I mentioned in um, the starting your garden or the growing kit guide that I have. So you need dirt, containers, a little water bin or a water collector underneath the container. You need to have the seeds Uh, depending on what kind of tomato you want to do, whether it's a cherry tomato, a slicer, a salad tomato, etc., etc. Remember, there are also many different colors and different types. So you have yellows, you have purples, you have reds, and yes, funny enough, they actually do impart a different flavor depending on which tomato you have. And the best way to explain this is through the purple tomato, which, funny enough, has a little bit of a smoky, almost umami flavor that is with this tomato, and it's really good to try it with burgers, funny enough. I personally love it. I've had ones like the uh, Prince tomato that is very purple on the shoulders or the tops of the tomato and also I really love the um, I believe it's called the black sailor which again is more of a salad slicer or a medium-sized tomato and again they're just very sweet with a small bit of smoky in there and yes it goes fantastic with a regular burger now After you've gained all your supplies, you're going to need a grow light or a heavily sunned window. 
so you have enough light for your tomato to grow in. These are a full sun uh, tomato or a full sun plant. Sorry about that. And they really enjoy about eight plus hours. You can go down to six, but when they're seedlings like this, it is always better to have more sunlight than less. Also, being able to give them a lot of water, but don't keep them consistently wet. Make sure that they're allowed to... Uh, you know, stay moist, but not sit in water when you have a water catcher or a drip pan underneath of them. Now, it will take about five to ten days for them to germinate, depending on the tomato. And the seedlings, you should probably sow three seedlings per container just to get good germination. Now, again, they will pop up and they will have their two first leaves and then after about three or five more days they will have their true leaves which are uh they're called true leaves because they are the beginning of the actual leaves of the plant you have your baby leaves your seedling leaves or the the starter leaves and then you have your true leaves. And that's when you know that your plant is truly bulking up and getting ready to start growing like crazy. Now, after this occurs, you're going to see the plant uh, either move towards the light or if you have a light, um, a plant light, it will start to stretch wildly up towards it so make sure that your light is about three to four inches above the seedlings leaves so it doesn't overstretch itself because if it does um, it will become weak in the stem and very flimsy this is a very hard thing for the plant to recover uh, so just make sure that it has uh, a tiny bit of space in between this is just again to get enough light for the plant if it doesn't have enough light then it will again stretch out trying to reach for it so it can get more of it and then the plant will grow too fast and turn into a rubbery little thing basically so slowly your plant is going to grow and once it hits about four inches, you're going to want it to do an up potting if you've done them in these small 72, 50 cell containers. Now, if you've decided to do them in the two and a half inch pots, you will be fine with them growing all the way to four to six weeks in that pot unless you've decided to do multiple tomato plants in that pot. Then by week three, I would suggest putting them in their own pots so they're able to have proper nutrition and grow fully in the healthiest environment possible by the time that they hit six weeks and they go out into the garden. Now let's speed up to six weeks. Your plants are beautiful and tall. They are looking great and they are ready to go outside, but we need to make sure that they're hardened off. Now for me, in a more cloudy climate, I am able to let them harden off by themselves as long as it's overcast and it will only take three days before I put them in the ground. Now, if it is clear very hot, very sunny. It is very easy for these new babies to have sun scald. And the reason why this happens is because they are not accustomed to straight UV light. They've only been under a grow light or they've only been in a UV resistant window uh, inside the house all this entire time. So you're going to need to introduce it to them very slowly. So first day, give them an hour. Second day, two hours. 
third day three hours, and then on and on until about day eight, where you can leave them or put them in the ground at that point. And they will be fine to work with and grow by themselves. They will have a different look in the leaves at that point. Their leaves will be a darker and thicker green. And I really love uh, somebody said that it's basically them getting a suntan or they've put their sunscreen on for the rest of the year. And the rest of the leaves on the plant will grow the same way because they will have been introduced to UV light through the sun immediately as they grow. Now, time is going to progress. Make sure to water the ground amply before placing them in the ground. Uh, And the biggest thing that you're going to do when you actually plant these tomatoes, you're going to dig the hole very deep. And the reason being is because you're going to stick the tomato plant at least two thirds of the way in the ground. I know this sounds weird. There is a very good reason for this. On your tomato plant, there are all these little fuzzy hairs on them. These are the beginnings of roots. If they go into the ground or they touch the ground, it stimulates the plant to start making roots. And when you decide to put this entire plant neck into the ground, it again stimulates those hairs to make new roots, which means that the plant will be able to get more nutrients a lot faster because again, it has a larger root system to get more food for the plant. It's fantastic. Also make sure to put some kind of nitrogen rich fertilizer in there because you're going to want to bulk up the plant uh, to grow nice and big and get those tomatoes faster. I have put um, a cracked egg in the hole, uh, which apparently is an old southern trick in the Americas. You can also just do rabbit or goat manure or a regular just nitrogen-rich fertilizer from the box store. You can also do water-soluble ones, which are really nice, and I think it's called Job's Organic Pellet fertilizer so if you want an organic choice that is a really cheap and nice one and it is a multiple use package it's a pretty decent sized package so you can use it for all your tomatoes unless you are doing you know over a 4 by 20 bed and then you're going to need to get another bag (laughs) but anyway make sure to fertilize and bury the tomato pretty deeply. Also make sure to get all the stems and suckers off the tomato plant up into the top, you know, third of the plant that's going to be sticking out of the ground. Now, because you've done this, you've prepped it to the best of your abilities, your tomato plant is now going to shoot up like crazy. You're going to see inches of it growing every couple of days. Now, It will take about two to four weeks before it starts producing flowers, depending on your area. And the reason why I say that is because I've seen tomato plants in very hot weather just climb like crazy and then set flower. While in a cooler climate, it does take a while because, again, it is semi-stunted by the cool climate. It just doesn't know what to do with itself, basically, until it gets to its proper temperature. And yes, every plant is different in the fact that it needs a suitable environment for it to grow, which is why in certain places, uh, you know, when the temperature gets up to 70, in Alaska, for instance, is when tomatoes can grow properly, which means tomatoes outside are going to have to wait until July before you see some significant serious growth. Here's the thing though, you can still grow them outside. I had to uh, upset 
a gardening community who believed that you couldn't grow tomatoes outside until I literally documented it and put a video on their Facebook page. It was not the best moment, but it was really hilarious, and I was very happy when other people decided they were going to try it afterwards. Anyways, about two to four weeks later, you're going to have flowers set. When this happens, either make sure that you have planted your plants about 10 inches close to each other all the way up to 18 inches. The reason why I say this is if you're going to have bushy plants, this is totally fine for you to do um, 18 inches. They will hold each other up. But if you're going to do 10 inches, you're going to want to make these into vining plants, uh, which means that you're going to take a bunch of the suckers off, which are uh, which live in the armpits between the leaf and the main stem of the plant. Suckers are the basically a clone of the main plant that will shoot off and make more flowers uh, and almost a separate tomato plant within the main vine of the plant. You can actually snap those off and grow them, root them in water, or even stick them in wet soil, and they will root themselves. Uh, and you can sell those or make more of that plant if you really like the tomato. But if you are going to be putting them so close together, make sure to take off a bunch of the stems about up to 20 inches on the plant and trellis your tomatoes or put them on a French weave, or be able to tie them up one way or another because you're going to need support for your tomatoes or they are going to fall over. And at the two to four, four to six week marker, that's when they're going to start falling over. And that is when you need to make sure that they're all tied up. Unless, again, you have big bushy tomatoes that are close together, they will hold each other up. I love this system, except for when it's time to actually pick tomatoes because, again, the structure is there and I'm able to pick almost all my tomatoes, but the ones that I can't reach are very hard to get to. So there's that advice. But... As you go forward, you're going to have all these flowers, and when you finally have a bunch of flowers or you start seeing flowers come in, put molasses water in the bed. The reason why is because molasses has a humongous amount of potassium in it, and potassium helps with flowering. If you want more flowers, which gives you more tomatoes, put molasses water or put a large amount of potassium into your beds. Now, of course, make sure to read the directions from your online friend. Usually it is a two parts water to one part molasses or, well, usually what I do is actually a very diluted form. I do about a half cup to two pints of water. And that has worked for me because I just, I can't find it in my heart to do, you know, eight cups of molasses to 16 cups of water. It just seems like way too much. And also I get really concerned that ants are going to come around and start messing up my tomato beds. That is a really big concern for me. Anyway, as we go forward, you have now put the potassium or the the molasses water into your beds and my tomatoes just boomed with flowers they really did which also means that I got a lot of tomatoes but the thing is is that I had to make sure to give them enough water especially in a very hot climate for them to sustain growth because 
this part is literally the slowest part for me. At least that's what it feels like. Watching tomatoes grow, (laughs) uh, the fruit at least grow, is painstakingly obvious because you have all these little fruits that are taking up so much energy from the soil, so much water from the soil, and they all need that nutrition, that nourishment for each individual tomato. So it takes a lot of time and resources for them to do this. However, I'm impatient and I want my tomatoes now, so I kindly tell my tomatoes to hurry the heck up. And they don't listen and they just keep on growing. So usually, I get my first ripe tomato uh, about two to three weeks after I see the actual little tomatoes start forming. Now, I have gotten it sooner. However, it is very rare that I get a ripe tomato after about a week to 10 days. It's very, very rare. Usually it happens on cherry tomatoes because they're smaller and they're a lot less resource intensive on the tomato plant. Now, really fun thing about tomatoes that I probably should have mentioned in the beginning. There are two different types that you've probably heard about. Determinant and indeterminate tomato plants. One is Basically, it gives you all the tomatoes that it can and then it dies. And then the other one is it gives you tomatoes until frost comes and then it dies. This is the difference between determinate and indeterminate. And the nice thing is is the name basically gives it away. Determinate determines the amount of tomatoes, while indeterminate is infinity tomatoes until it dies dies from frost. It's fantastic. Um, Usually your cherry tomatoes are going to be your determinate plants. And if you are somebody who loves cherry tomatoes like me, what I did, and I loved this, was taking uh, the suckers off of the main plant or the mother plant and cloning them. And doing this about two to four weeks from the beginning of this plant's life cycle. So mother plant is in the ground for four weeks and I take off a sucker from it and I start growing it. So after it dies or it is done producing uh, the first round in tomatoes, I will already have my second round of tomatoes from the clone tomato plant or the child plant. And it will at least give me two to four more weeks of tomatoes because, again, I planned, I succession planned this plant to give me tomatoes in the future. Which, again, is why succession sowing, I have an episode for that as well, is just so important and it's it's really worthy of a gardener to try to do. Yes, it is a little bit more time intensive. Uh, You have to remember to do it mainly, but you get such a better yield and it is wonderful when you finally are able to get it down because you'll just get plants and you'll get food one after the other after the other. But anyway, back to tomatoes. After you have figured out if you want a determinate or an indeterminate cherry tomato slicer or salad tomato, you have done all of this work to grow it, see the flowers bloom, and now you have the ripened tomato in your hand Well, now it's time to harvest it. You can either harvest it with your hands and pluck it off, but if it's a giant slicer, you're going to want to clip it off. And the reason being is because I've broken tomato plants and been very upset by doing this uh, when you pick a large tomato. It will just take hold of the vine that it has with it and take multiple tomatoes with it because uh, 
tomatoes cluster. They unfortunately don't have like one tomato on every branch. It's usually three, five, sometimes ten, which is just amazing when that happens. But it's a large amount of tomatoes all clustered together, and you have to be very careful trying to get the ripe one off surrounded by, you know, the green tomatoes that haven't quite ripened yet. So remember to have shears in your back pocket whenever you go into the garden so you can snip that off. Take a basket with you because you're going to have more than one ripe tomato if you have multiple plants. And possibly bring a washcloth or a napkin with you because you know you're going to bite that tomato. (laughs) So make sure to wipe your mouth off afterwards. But Now you've had your harvest or you have your harvest, make sure that you now want to learn how to preserve or personally, I would learn how to preserve while they're growing because when you have all these different tomatoes at your disposal, you don't necessarily want to eat all of them raw. Now, you could be like me and say, well, of course I want to just eat all of them raw. That's kind of the point of tomatoes, but there is a variety of ways that you can take care of, preserve, and eat tomatoes. Heck, I just found a new recipe for green tomatoes and quick pickling them, which by the way, you don't want to eat a lot of because of the solanine that's inside of them. It's a pretty nasty toxin that can give you diarrhea and sometimes make you vomit. Uh, And it's actually pretty toxic, like upsetting in the tummy area, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so enjoy your tomatoes. Have fun growing them. It's so wonderful to be able to see them as they process and grow bigger and bigger. And hopefully soon I will be uh, talking more about different plants and growing them And then after we're done with that, I am going to start the next season of this podcast with teaching you guys the different ways to preserve or use your garden snacks, which I'm really excited for because I love teaching people about making zucchini bread. (laughs) All right. Thank you for listening. I hope this is helping you for staying, well, excited for gardening. Have a wonderful day, guys. Until the next time. Bye.